did you know that you're not allowed to be racist just because you're gay? I didn't know that. Wish someone had told me. So there's this guy. I actually saw a bit of a preview to this video because um, I, it seems, I guess this guy had gotten into an argument on Twitter with some other content creator, a, a, a person of color. And, um, and um, I, I don't want to like, I, I don't know if the drama has been settled, so I don't want to like reignite it or whatever. But basically like, rather than engage with the arguments of the other person, he basically said, oh, you don't think Vosh is a Nazi, so you're like an Uncle Tom, like you're a cuck to the white man. And he made like this two minute music video where he basically called the other guy the sea slur. Um, it was pretty weird. R right. So anyway, um, this was a response to some kind of argument. Uh, I'm gonna play, thank you. Let's see what's going on on the musky and hellscape known as Twitter. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Raccoon Rants? Get it? Because his name's Rico Rants, but he called him Raccoon Rants. You get it? Your, your brain firing on all cylinders, do you get it? All right, Mr. One of the Good Ones, you're lucky I ain't in the mood for no black on black crime, right? I normally don't do this, however. Fun detail, this guy hides dog whistles in between the breakneck edits he does. The first one I spotted is when he flashes a picture of shark on screen with a raccoon call. The dude is a racist piece of shit. Ah, cool. That's great. I love guys like this. I, um, I really appreciate, like, how, how much Blitler shit we've been having to deal with lately. However, but go on there and break him off with a real preview of the remix. So it's, it's like, it's very, like, over-edited. That's, like, the vibe. So again, this is in response, like, like this has nothing to do with me. This is like, like, do you understand how, how normal this is? I don't even have like a thing, like I, I, it's hard to even joke about it because it's literally like, like just from nowhere. But this is like an ad for the video back here that he's doing. Yeah, he's using it to promote his video. Let's say Nick, the LGBT community is cancerous hey. as f These people are less than human to me. So he was arguing with the guy on Twitter, and then he just decides to use it as first calling him a raccoon, and then just as like an ad for this video. So, right. It's all for attention. It's stupid. This guy's a racist. Blah, blah. Um, very cool. Very special. But uh, let's take a look at the video anyway. So the premise of the video is that I, and Keffels, it seems, because she is also in the thumb are racist, but rainbow. Um, I don't know. I kind of get the feeling that this guy is extremely homophobic. That's just a feeling that I get. I could be totally off on that. It's also like 50 minutes. But helpfully, it's broken up into categories here. See? One of these categories is called the section you scoundrels are looking for. Now, I am a scoundrel. So I have to assume this is the one that involves me, right? But let's, let, I mean, we, we have to give it the intro, right? Like, like I just, I just want to say, I just want to see. I haven't seen the video. I don't know. If I recall correctly, the video is actually giga stupid. Well, I knew that. Like, I, I, I yeah, I mean, I figured that much. But if we just assume that about every bad video about me and then left it at that, we never have any, we never have any, she said, oh, it's stupid. Well, I know, but let's find out how it's stupid, right? This video is brought to you by Grand News. From bona fide to oh, okay. husband, have an excuse. Oh, Mooncat. Just to sort of 
project the same sort of danger that she had from her husband onto trans women. I'm Dave Chappelle. They cancel people that are more powerful than me. They cancel J.K. Rowling. My God, J.K. Rowling wrote all the Harry Potter books by herself. Man just said J.K. Rowling cancel. What is Rowling? What? Surface they look at they will attack from the panorama was Is that me? Is that the good part? Because I am not a woman. Why what Oh yeah, Vosh, this video is extremely confusing and incoherent, by the way. Oh They're trying out new tactics to keep me from making content off of the videos they try to clout shark off of by mentioning me. You know, like Jesse Gender made like a five million year long video. They, it's one of the tactics is just make it too long for me to cover reasonably with the amount of time that I stream, which is four hours a year. Um, making it incoherent and unpleasant to watch is also a new tactic. I won't give him a high five. Any face. I digress. From that to internet icons like Vosh. Just say, bruh. Ooh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, careful. I can't see what that tender queers are. God, no. I don't take it back. I don't take it back. Thanks. They are. FBI, open up. There's a legion of case studies that demonstrate. Wait. FBI, open up. That's that's the clip you use when you're calling people pedos. But in that case, it was being used to censor. Keffel saying, tarts. Why would you? That's not the right. That's not the right clip to play. No, like, like he's just using audio clips. Like, that's not, contextually, that's the wrong, if you're familiar with, like, the language of video editing and the, and the, the memes that tend to be used in reliable way, that's not, like, so it's a dog whistle? No, I just think he's misusing them. A pernicious principle, a privilege, if you will. I, I guess it could be a joke about her getting swatted, which seems... Like an odd thing to criticize a trans woman for? You know? The best introduction to this comes in the form of a Jussie Smollett. Mm -hmm. Now, if you recall, the panorama was the perfect cloak for Jussie's grand opening of the critically condemned play, The Boot Is On My Face. The very boot being the metaphorical manifestation of racism and homophobia packaged into a one arc play armed with enough bleach. Why would you why would you say any of this the way he's saying it? Oh, can I even watch this video? Wait, why would you, why and all of the words and editing choices that are being put it's was this done by like an algorithm? This is like an unironic schizo video. Yeah, I'm not joking. Like, I, 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 um, increase the speed. I don't know if that would help. To make Vibes Cartel himself blush and a noose bedizening the neck like a plantation themed party. So, whatever true diddly was art when he took this picture. Is there anything inside no. the apartment? What? what? What, okay, the Jesse Smollett story. What, what about it? Why, why did he talk about it that way? I know what happened to the Jesse Smollett story, but the way he introduced it made me think that I'm like missing parts. Of the, like, what, did, what is he saying? What is this? I'm going to have to like explain this video bit by bit, and you're going to have to explain it to me. Phobic slurs. And oh, he wait, was I understand this part. By two black men who called him homophobic slurs and popped it off with, this is mega country. I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. I, I, I can't, I can't do this. I, I'm sorry. I, I know I can't do this. This is, this is, this is incoherent. I, am I going to have to do it? I think I am. I've never, I never thought we'd have to bust this out for editing before. Like, I'm not, like, this isn't even a response to the ideas that are being presented, because I don't even know what ideas are being presented. This is purely for editing choices. 
The fuck? The like what? Like what? Okay, like I no, I okay. So at the end of Jussie Smollett's made up story, the alleged attacker said, "This is MAGA country." Okay. Now, as a way of highlighting that bit, our man over here did the "It's not much, but it's honest work" meme. The act, the guy in the photo who died recently. What does that have to do with this is MAGA country? Is the implication that this honest work guy is like MAGA country? That is it just because he's like a white guy in farm because he's a country white guy? That that doesn't like look at this. Homophobic slurs and popped it off with this is MAGA country. Like that this guy isn't associated at all with racism or conservatism. He's associated with like earnest, hardworking, blue collar labor. That's, I've never seen this guy used in like a, oh, oh you know, this is a sundown town kind of vibe. I, not, not once in my life. Is it literally just because he's a white country dude? Yeah, this guy needs to read Know Your Meme before editing this shit together. Like, but that's, it's, it's actually, this is like a memetic virus because it's so confusing. I don't even know what point is trying to be made. Like, because I, I don't know, like, but then it says, rest in peace. Because he died recently, which is unfortunate, but he's, he's an old man. So I guess that makes sense, you know. Um, that doesn't mean you can't use it though. Well, no, but it's really confusing. It, it, like, because it doesn't mean that. I, I don't get it. It's not like being smart. It just seems like he just thinks. Uh. The fact that this was so perfectly fulfilling the precipitous requirements for a hate crime made me dizzy. My head did bounce like ball and was swinging more than playground. Precipitous? I guess that could work. Amelia, dude, this guy ameliorates harder than I do. Holy shit. Then celebrities proliferated the internet with responses of support for the Empire actor, Jussie. And if you don't remember the show Empire, it brought you classics like this. I don't. I don't. I don't. To be lying. I, why? 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 Then why besmirch the couple of them instead of the men that swap their hoods for hats? Bench. <laughs> this is where we waited for Jesse to come before we attacked them. Anyway, the world dragged Jesse like a dead deer off to the side of the road because in an attempt to apprehend the attention Jesse believed he was entitled to, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna like I, I I we're not even talking about the politics yet. Who is this video for? Okay, this isn't like a Roblox or Minecraft like secret hack discovered video. This is a video on politics. What like look at this without audio? What audience is interested in the subject of this video, but is so zoomer brained? that you need to have a silhouetted backdrop and then one second later, also a fake glitch edit onto your face to keep people's attention. Linkard, I saw it, I, it's fine. It like, this, uh, this is more over-edited than some of the like, you know, Roblox secret trick to get more Robux videos that I watched back in college to like get a glimpse on the other side. I don't know who this is for. He got the type of attention nobody wants. Infamy. So what did he do in order to ward off the warranted criticism he got? He did this. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I am not. I am innocent, and I am not. If I did 
tremendous than it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens... Oh, you forgot to mute that. You forgot to mute him saying suicidal there. It's over. Demonetized. To me, when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. Okay. Jussie Dool wielded the race card and the gay card, which in a white supremacist cishet society is somewhat of a draw for a performative people who brandish social justice boy in their bio and bios alone. Now, You'd probably say a retort that those marginalized... So is his argument that queer people and people of color can be bad people too? And if so, how is this an argument against me in any capacity? Is that the argument that's being made? Yes, literally, yes. When, that, I, I agree. Okay. So far, I agree. His cards didn't save Jussie from jail, nor did his lawyer, who is the current lawyer for the monospheric mogul in, sorry, Andrew Tate, not Angel, Jesus, well. But it can be argued that the very card saved O.J. Simpson. Did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. After we finished filming, O.J. said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. And this is it. A black man accused of wiping out a white woman will be thrown under the jail. But O.J.'s blackness was only rivaled by his wealth, as well as him being the closest possible to the pinnacle of patriarchy. A star-studded athlete adored by the entire world. That trumped racist white America's voracious desire to protect white womanhood and white femininity, which are pinnacles of white supremacy that if you haven't heard enough of, you could watch this video up here, but- I don't actually agree. Most everyone thought OJ was guilty. Also, I think he was guilty. Most people think he was guilty. The ruling of the jury was not the ruling of the public court of opinion. So, the, I mean, the trial of OJ is a whole thing on its own. I don't, I don't think that being wealthy saves you from racism. I think that being wealthy protects you from the consequences of racism in a lot of ways but I don't think it lessens the racism you really experience. Like, Obama is, you know, a pretty acclaimed guy. He was the president. But uh, he's also been targeted with a lot of racism. It's just, he's very powerful. And that means that the consequences of that racism are lowered. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with this analysis. In short, white womanhood is so powerful that it can kill an Emmett Till. It can get the police called on you for simply existing while simultaneously being a badge of marginalization as white women and white femmes are subjugated in the patriarchal societies as well. Like you said, like JK Rowling yes. uses her Buzzfeed feminism. Wait, wait, that didn't make any sense. Why would he, why would he talk about OJ Simpson, a black man, being acquitted after being accused of murdering a white woman, and then he would follow into that with talking about how white womanhood is super powerful. He just made the contrary example. He, he, he made the argument that the wealth of OJ was significant enough that it overcame people's desire to avenge white womanhood, but then just narratively, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense to segue in that way. Um, that's what I like to also call it. <laughs> J.K. Rowling, Taylor Swift, like utilize that white feminism. Like they only care when the issues pertain to them, but they won't 
fight for other marginalized identities, which is actually like the core root of feminism. You fight for equality. Like sure, like intersectionality is a key part of feminism. This is the video equivalent of a cruelty squad, HUD. Thank you, 2D Siggy, for the $5. I agree completely. Bo booting up a uh, video essay, leftist YouTube cruelty squad. Um, the editing is the gigantic health blob in the top left. And if you want to fight for equality, you should fight for it on all aspects. God, God what? damn it. Sorry about that. Foreign from the foreign line sweatshop. And you already know that I had to go and make a mention of Ellen DeGeneres, one of the prime examples of people who weaponize their white femininity and also, of course, the queerness, uh -huh. as well as the latest white woman of the week. We, we can make that a segment, white woman of the week. Colleen, Colleen. Hey, what are you doing? It's been a while since you saw my face. I haven't been doing so great, so Back I'm in your head now. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. Toxic gossip dream. Just as long as it's entertaining. They don't know what to do when they're in a situation where they have to be accountable. So they don't know what accountability looks like. Yeah, interestingly, for Miranda Sings, white womanhood worked against her because a only a white woman would do the ukulele song in response to criticisms of that severity and b playing into that stereotype actually massively exacerbated the hate that she got like everyone has been making jokes about like white woman moment right so in that in this instance i think okay i'm gonna say it because i think i and i've made my opinion on this clear i think that miranda sings completely in the wrong on this uh, however, I actually think that a huge um, proportion of the blowback against her has been motivated by misogyny um, because the whole white woman moment thing means that we get the double joy of seeing a groomer outed and also of them sloppily defend themselves in a way that conforms to stereotypes of the group they belong to. Uh, certainly being a woman has not helped her here. I think that Hello. Ellen and J.K. Rowling share something here. Um, and it's something that I have seen. It's going to surprise no one. At this point, I think it's just, it's the power of whiteness. It's existing in that proximity to all of the social things that whiteness grants you. So much power has been ceded to you. As How are these people being interviewed? Hey, listen, any break from the editing, okay? a white person throughout your entire life in all of these like small social interactions that you have in turning on the news and seeing people like you in turning on various tv programs and seeing people like you in not having to actively look for people who look like you you don't have to seek them out they find you you have some sense of power over the world around you and i think that that starts to dictate how you behave in positions where you feel like you're losing power. I think that people who are used to experiencing this. a certain amount of social control are more likely to react with intense negativity or in ways that are really lashing out when they start to lose that social control. So I think that both JK Rowling and Ellen DeGeneres. I think it's kind of true, right? No, this is completely true. I think there's a reason why we tend to associate like Karen behavior and like woman meltdown behavior with white women. And I think a large part of that is because that non-white women know that if they have a public meltdown, especially as celebrities or people in positions of social prominence, that um, they will uh, not be treated as kindly. Like sexism is a real thing, but there is like a class of woman who unironically does the like, well, I'm like a, a perfect princess and everything I do is right, and like, oh, you criticize me, like, meltdown, meltdown. And like, I, I just, I think that in, in positions of power, certainly, like, it's just a mark of relative privilege, right? It's like a landed gentry thing. It's aristocracy behavior. And there just aren't that many non-white people in America who feel like they're born into the social aristocracy. I think that they're both experiencing that. Now, obviously, the word privilege... Holy shit, Zeke! How the do you paint that quickly? Oh my God. 
This looks incredible. That's so good. That's great. That's just wonderful. Guys, it's not AI. I've seen Zeke's paintings. Just talent. Privilege in this context of marginalized folk is not the same as white privilege and the like, due to the infrastructural and historical violence that rends that whatever true, privilege Lenore? we have from our hands. But the paucity of privilege that marginalized folks have in progressive spaces is what we're discussing today. What is marginalized privilege? And how do we address it as progressives? And I got a star-studded cast of guests that are local to the communities that are being critiqued, rather than me, the sisters of head black men, doing an inter-community criticism. Okay. But I can criticize this. My Wait, so again, is the premise of this video, is the premise of this video really just people in positions, like people who are members of minority groups, are subject to criticism too? Because that's the position I have that I keep getting in trouble for. Like, that's the thing people keep getting mad at me about. I've never said people can't criticize me because I'm queer or autistic. They're, f they're free to. Obviously, people criticize me anyway. Uh, but I constantly get shit for criticizing trans people or people of color or women or whatever else. Just for criticizing. Not for being wrong in my criticisms. Because they don't want to engage with those. Uh, just for, for even the act of criticizing them. Basically, yes, but he thinks you hide behind autism. I don't think I've ever hidden behind autism, except as like an obvious joke. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever sincerely done that. I, I own up to all the things that I say. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, no. Sometimes there are people in my community who think that other people's responses to me are motivated in part by ableism, which is certainly the case, but it's not a position that I defend or like negate ground i like i i don't i don't try to cover up mistakes that i've made with that you know i take accountability but i guess we'll get to my part when we get to my part this is like a journey experience of weaponizing marginalization as a black man myself now if you are familiar with this channel i have called i'm sorry we, we need to talk about the white slander i have called white people skeet colored sun dodging paper impersonating people the list goes on. Mm -hmm. I've said things that will be read back to me in the court that decides whether I go to heaven or hell. And all that I could hope for is that my family gets a discount for my funeral because I know ain't no way I go to heaven. And I would, I would blush if I found out that they spent so much money just for me to go to hell. Even God, even if God himself is up there smoking yeah. and getting they yeah. ate, it don't matter. But there's, there's one thing I did that truly demonstrates how marginalization could be weaponized. And that was my most popular video at the moment. Asiaphobia in the black community. So that was, so for those of you who don't know the purpose of that bit, all of that was um, virtue signaling. Notice how it didn't follow from the previous point or lead into this one, because we're about to talk about Asiaphobia. It was a prolonged virtue signal to uh, remind the audience that he is okay being casually racist against white people, which, by the way, I'm too. That's fine. I don't actually, I, I don't think there's much social harm at all. I think that a lot of people, especially some people of color, will hide behind the joking racism against white people as a disguise for actual racism against white people. And I think that's really weird. But that's just the same, like, if you actually have something to say, then f say it. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, a per, if a person actually has, like, some kind of innate grievance against white people, just say it. Don't pretend that you're just, like, a, a wordsmith of funny, you know, synonyms for white. It, like, just say it. Like, we can, we can engage with the point. Don't hide behind comedy. I'm sure he actually doesn't like white people, you know, but, you know, whatever. I vividly recall my heart dropping into my... Yes! After I upload this video, and I saw the sign that YouTubers fear the most... The limited monetization sign. Oh, okay. gosh. This meant that all my hard work would be for naught. So I started campaigning, claiming that YouTube is penalizing me. No. If you're making videos 
to express a political position and the video gets demonetized, that doesn't mean your hard work goes nowhere. Ideally, tens of thousands of people would still benefit from the knowledge you mean to impart. I've had hundreds of videos get yellow dollar signed. I, I think it's kind of weird to think of it as purely like a financial venture, but okay. I mean, it, I, I like, obviously, the, ideally, you'd make money from it. I just think it's weird to say that it was all for naught me for being a black creator, discussing these racy issues, which is definitely something that happens, but not this time. Regardless of the commentary to be had on how the algorithm treats us, we people who are darker than blue, as opposed to our colorless creator counterparts, I knew that folks will rally behind me if I cried algorithmic racism rather than the fact that my video got limited monetization because I said something that I shouldn't have. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't say I've ever weaponized the transness, but have I done that thing where I have been guilty of reinforcing white supremacy or generally just okay. shitty attitudes and then been like, but... That's kind of a weird thing to do and then to admit a bit, I think. Kind of devalues actual accusations of systemic racism when you'll just like scream it at the top of your lungs no matter what. And just move on real quick. Okay, that's that's kind of weird. All right. But like, no, I you you can't you can't call me out on that because I've guys. Been... Okay, some people in chat are being weird about this. It's not self-flagellation or white guilt to be a white person talking about white privilege. A lot a lot of you are getting real quick with the trigger fingers there, and I don't appreciate it. Okay, don't develop that conservative reflex where any time a white person brings up the subject, you think it's self hate. It's not. Okay, I'll tell you what white self hate looks like. I pointed out. Uh, pretty often, but this, this, so far, nothing here is, is, is off. Through X, Y, Z, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's why I recently made a mistake. Um, I completely misspoke about the concept of female privilege. We all know, like, that would be an example of Oh my me, God, I've had the video running at 0 0.9 times speed this entire time. Me speaking about womanhood as a man, and I could have been like, okay, but I'm trans, but I didn't. I became an adult when I came out. I became a better person when I came out. I became a real person when I came out. Prior to coming out, I was more likely to fall back on having been oppressed as a woman than I ever have been as a trans person. But I forgot you were ever a woman. I was just like, I was just like. <laughs> I forget too. I lived as a woman so thoroughly that I believed it myself for a long time. And the most, the most obvious example would be like the white woman tears thing right? Like, did I ever do it in such a way that I was harming someone directly? Not that I can remember. I certainly f hope not. However, did I speak as a white person and then respond as a woman? Yes, absolutely. The sad part is, is that it worked. The limited monetization was lifted. I paid my rent and the video went on to be acclaimed by my critics and contemporaries. But I bit the hand that fed me to do this, to get this acclaim. And by admitting to it, I'm also robbing the next creator of color that claims the algorithmic- Okay, well, he's making the point. I agree with this. Wait, he's okay. He's addressing it. The algorithm is biased against them. And because folks may doubt that now due to my admission, much like they doubt Elliot Page when they call him the new Jesse Smollett without even knowing the veracity of his tears. But most of all, I robbed myself of the merit that this video had because I can never be sure if the video would have performed this well had it not been for the block boost. In this current landscape of leftist community- okay, I think this is a fine, okay, he, I mean, he, he intercut the interview portion, but I think this is a fine thing to say on the subject. I don't think you should claim that your video got demonetized because of racism if it wasn't, because I do think that delegitimizes the broader arguments against the way that racism can impact YouTube monetization or any kind of systemic, uh, you know, platform-oriented thing. But no, I'm glad he, I'm glad he addressed it. We rightfully weigh the perspective of marginalized folks a bit more than our racist white. I mean, racist white counterparts. And while there is discourse what? on the perspective of marginalized folks a bit more than our racist white. 
I mean racist white counterparts. And while there is discourse on whether we really listen to marginalized folks or not, rather than- You just said racist both times? Okay, because white people racist? Okay. ...than simply signaling that we do, there is discussion to be had on whether this affirmative action of opinion goes awry or not. I guess it's quite similar to like, uh, you know, Blair White. Um, quite an easy way to like round up support for yourself and sort of grift in a way. Like, I think a lot of right wing people like to think that they're not being transphobic while they're being transphobic. They're like, I think they like to say things like, well, I can't be transphobic because I'm listening to this trans person and agreeing with them, even though that trans person is saying really trans. I think we could do a better job with the green screen keying on this one, not going to lie transphobic stuff the candace owens as well with like you know black issues and it's it's like it it seems to be quite easy to round up a lot of support because i think there's a lot of um people not wanting to label themselves as racist or transphobic or whatever users on twitter have made the running joke that people have begun using i i feel like i feel like this is still somehow like a pro my position video because all of the arguments are like ones that i would make you, it's, you know, it's wrong to hide behind your minority identity when you're criticized. Um, you should stand by your positions. You shouldn't make face, like fake claims of being victims of racism or whatever when it hasn't actually happened. Uh, a, moon, a moon cat just said like, hey, some people feel uncomfortable criticizing like minority conservatives because of their minority stuff. Like, I, I, feel, I feel like all my positions are being validated here. I, I don't know. This is like, so, so then how do I get involved? Can I just skip to the me part? I'm skipping to the me part. It's the home and near the bone because they belong to our very community. Yeah, it's time. So people over here might occasionally say re whatever. Okay, I'll take people saying re and supporting class emancipation, then I will have taken them saying re not supporting class emancipation. Yeah, I'm hey, doing listen. gay ops on- I, I think that's a good argument and I stand by it, yeah. Y yeah. I think that's pretty straightforward personally, but okay. Tender queers. I'm encouraging my followers to make pick crew accounts and enter and infiltrate tender queer Twitter. So I've said this before. This Operation um, Keffel Queer is underway. This is not new. This shouldn't be surprising to anyone who watches my content. I say the N word sometimes in private. Once they catch wind of the plan, they're going to all become. Is anyone surprised? Okay, moving on incredibly suspicious of pit crews and they will eat each other alive if you're a white dude to listen over here this is the circle for white dudes who really love saying Nick. they love saying they're like ah, i'm out Brad. okay this is where they are okay I does it matter which pit crew no just use a random one but the more diverse the better like make it like a black butch lesbian the cornbread tube versus white bread i'm sorry what editing is this? No, I liked that editing. That was good. That editing was fine. Whole wheat bread. Baguette bread tube saga has been plagued with a few names, but none as incendiary as Walsh. What the devil? Y'all saw that? <laughs> Easily one of the forerunners of the debate bro sphere. I've got a, yeah, I've got a confession to make, guys, okay? When I'm in the car and I've got uh, hip hop music playing and I'm singing along to it, okay? I do not self censor when they drop the the end bomb okay i i th that is still the case i will not cuck myself to that extent i refuse i'm a proud warrior of the west i stand strong i will not okay will not listen to hip-hop music alone in my car and cuck myself out that way okay the f the final i'm the, the the final nordsman standing against ragnarok all right and listen it's impossible to deny his indelible effect on the online left that being said he has employed many misogynies and tactical bigotries to make even the husk himself blush. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now there are far. Was that the was that the Destiny cuck clip? Is that is was is the cucking relevant to the argument that's being made? Was that just the first clip that he had on hand? Okay, I don't even know. Far better breakdowns of the many transgressions that these folks have made that will be linked here. But I want to discuss very ah, these good these good videos, Professor Flowers and Noah Sampson. Briefly, how they seem to shield themselves with their marginalized status. Really? If you create progressive content on this platform, 
you have had an overlapping audience with Vosh. Mm -hmm. Echo. Many folks will come in your comments clamoring about when will you talk to Vosh, claiming that we have more in common than in contrast. Give him a chance. He's clipped out. That used to be the case. Not as much anymore now that basically everyone on the online left hates me. But it did used to be the case. Context a lot. You know, all that horse and PDF file rumors, they're just rumors. L listen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, okay? Let's not... Let's not bundle in the spurious, dishonest uh, 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 pedo allegations along with the incredibly substantiated, impossible to disprove horse allegations. You know, if, if, if these are not, these have not been demonstrated to equivalent degrees. The U bingo card is getting filled the fuck up. Well, it it always does, right? Because I this has been the case for a while now, but it's it's pretty much like bog standard now which is when people don't want to deal with my arguments, which again, in this case, the video seems to be making my arguments, albeit worse and more incoherently, but whatever. You know, basically you, you throw a million sl smears at me against the wall and you see what sticks, right? Uh, if you levy a wide enough range of criticisms, uh, most audience members will never look into any of them. They'll just take them at face value. Or as if you try to directly respond to an argument or engage in a single position, the audience is compelled to engage with the way in which that position is presented and defended. Um, it's just a, it's a, a, an easier way of dealing with me. <laughs> I don't care about that. You know what I care about? You know what foreign cares about? Big body foreign? I care about the racism. I care about mm -hmm. the misogyny. Mm -hmm. You might be able to look past the bigotry, but... You see, Jay one of the shields that are raised when criticizing Vosh is his queerness, of course. But the one I like the most is his autism. I'm a oh wait, here we go. There we go. I'm aware of Vosh's autism, by the way, still doesn't mean his actions aren't able to be criticized. It does mean that, actually. True. Very serious comment here. Actually, a, uh, uh, a, a, an earnest position that I would defend. I'm a different kind of author. Big body foreign, they say. True. Yes, they call me that. Big body foreign. Give him a chance. He's on a spectrum. Dust does not pick up on social cues. So wait, is this like actually being treated as like a serious argument? Like a single obvious joke tweet? And he's like, okay, well, clearly the cornerstone of the Vosh defense for years now has been that he's autistic. So let me spend like 20 minutes engaging with that. Okay, all right. For one, how dare you? No, seriously, how dare you? Take me to be the that Jesus rode to Jerusalem on. And secondly, what? how dare you infantilize and dehumanize autistic folk them what? by putting them in a category impervious to criticism? What? But most importantly... No, he, well, he actually is. He's like sanctimoniously debunking a joke tweet. Okay. All right. We know this not to be the case. Because we have a whole Jesse Dom gender who is autistic. I have so many thoughts about this. The excuse being like, don't criticize. Hold on really quickly. So if my earnest position is that I don't think autistic people should be subject to any criticism for their behavior, why have I torn into Jesse gender multiple times? What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh God, I thought Jesse was smarter than this. I swear to God, Jesse was smarter like a year and a half ago. I don't know what happened. Criticize this person because they can't communicate themselves as well because they're autistic. I used to work at a Boy Scout summer camp, and there was a uh, gentleman who ran the rifle range and the shotgun range at our camp. There was this guy that he had issues with, and every uh, at the end of every um, day, we would do this like we would do like we'd march in formation, whatever the paramilitary Boy Scout stuff, and we'd shoot off a shotgun. And this guy would shoot off the shotgun, and he, the one guy who was autistic, he would prepare the shotgun for him. And one day, because he was pissed off at the man he put in the wrong uh shotgun powder that was just much louder and that's dangerous okay. when you have a weapon even if the weapon doesn't have any bullets in it and then we went and spoke uh, to the uh, guy the autistic guy who ran the shotgun range about this and he's like well it was autistic i didn't i didn't think it was like it was like i didn't think that it was uh a bad thing um yeah he did nothing wrong he's autistic so that's that's fine actually and I didn't understand. I'm like, no, you run the you run the shotgun range. You know about safety protocols. I know you do because you teach it. Um, and so to put it off on that is just using your autism as a shield to escape responsibility for your behavior. If that ain't enough for you, we have Swalsome. 
who is literally autistic and bisexual. Like, literally the same thing as Vosh without the edginess, which is a... It's like the Diet Coke to my Coke. It's, you know, it's same same brand with both autistic and bi. I th that actually, unironically, that actually felt pretty dehumanizing. Like, oh, they ha they both have, like, the same, like, like identity stamp, you know, so... It's, but it's like, yeah, less edgy in one, you know. Okay, that's pretty weird. Of course, caucus speak for racism. Bosh, him not saying it as much as his followers being like, okay, but he's autistic, he's autistic, he's autistic. It's like... I, God, I just don't see this for my audience that much. I, I'm, I'm sorry, if you guys are earnestly going into other people's communities and arguing that I can't be criticized because I'm autistic, I've never seen this happen, but stop. I, 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 I just, I have, I have not seen this happen. I've seen you guys make jokes about it. Like literally anytime I misspeak or anytime anything happens or whatever, you'll make jokes about me being autistic, which is more you being ableist towards me, if anything. Uh, permission granted, by the way, you're fine. I just, I do not see the earnest defense. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I just don't see it. You guys need to recognize what you're doing here. Like, this is not helpful to autistic people. I don't, I, I this don't. This is really not helpful at all. I don't all. see this happen. A lot of white autistic folks, um, in particular, will have fallen into communities on the internet that are really misogynistic, that are really, like, racist, that are generally... Okay. I feel, okay. They just have a lot of shitty attitudes, and they... I thought, I thought all the autistic white people transitioned may have a basis that they're operating from from where they think like that's kind of normal behavior. I've met autistic men in particular who think that, yeah, it's totally normal to say like scuzzy things to women. That's how that's how men joke around, right? That's how it works. Here's where it starts to get more complicated in my. N no, in my ex in my experience, autistic people tend to be hyper self-conscious about tripping social flags and for that reason withdraw from contact especially with women because they understand that there's a greater social stigma associated with being weird towards women my experience with autistic people is the opposite they tend to be i have never in my life earnestly seen an autistic person use autism as a defense for socially unacceptable behavior because most autistic people are aware of the fact that they're not as socially developed as other people and are very self-conscious about it. I, like, that's the opposite of my experience. I, I feel like it's actually kind of ableist to like, uh, yeah, well, a lot of autistic white people like are super misogynistic and racist. Are they? Are they? Is that true? I don't, I don't know if that's, I mean, certainly some of them are, but I feel like a lot of them tend to lean in on the progressive side of things. Because the progressive side of things tends to be a little bit more openly, uh, you know, in, in favor of protecting, uh, you know, like the ableist stuff and that kind of thing. Okay. My mind is if someone has told you that was inappropriate, I didn't like it, you now have enough information to correct the behavior. So even if you didn't have it before, now yeah, you do. Yeah. 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 Assuming that your behavior was actually in the wrong, by the way, um, if you're doing something you have every right to do and they say, you're making me uncomfortable, like, because I get that a lot when I criticize other people where, you know, I, I was on Blue Sky the other day and um, I made a tweet, which was, or tw Blue Sky Skeet, whatever, um, which was, I don't know, it was something innocuous. It was like, I love scratching my balls, scratch, scratch. And then somebody came in there and replied with like, uh, you piece of shit, I hope I never see you here. And I replied, and I was like, well, you, you responded to me, so you could just block me and you would never see me. And then he was like, whoa, you're responding to me? Even though I made it clear I don't want to engage with you? Way to read social signals, creep. And uh, that would be an instance where I, I don't have to respect other people's discomfort. Um, but for the most part, yeah, y you, you should. I don't, I don't know. It, yeah, that actually happened. I'm not making that. It happened like three days ago. Now you know. And so for me the ableism comes into play there when people are like oh but they're autistic they're autistic you're implying that we can't make those connections and we absolutely can to imply that an autistic person can well autistic people have a harder time with it that's 
That's one of the symptoms of autism. Social communication is very rarely as direct as somebody saying, I like slash did not like this social prompt. Usually it's more nuanced than that. The real difficulty as an autistic person is trying to read people's emotions without them clearly expressing them to you, because most people don't. You have to pick up on other cues, other signals. And you can learn to do that, it's totally possible, but like realistically, it's not just about listening when people directly tell you they're uncomfortable. Obviously, that's like, that's like the easy part, but it's more complicated. Can't have that understanding. You are using ableism to enable behavior. I feel, man, I think it's funny because I like, I, 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 I'm obviously comfortable enough with ableism, right? But I feel like I talk about autism in a more nuanced way than basically anyone on the online left. I don't know of anyone who does it better than me. I, I, I have, no, <laughs> or about like social cues. I don't know. It's, 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 it's weird because I feel like the most you get in other spaces is either like silence or like this kind of patronizing disregard, or maybe like, here's some life advice. And then it's like telling an incel to shower. Like, oh, you haven't gotten a date? Well, try showering. Oh, you're autistic? Well, when people tell you explicitly directly while making eye contact that they're uncomfortable, you should stop doing what you're doing. Oh, well, thank you for the advice. You know, that's very helpful. But let me, let me ease up off your boy Vosh for a second and get to the gal limb. This one right here is for the gal limb. What? Keffels, probably one of the Keffels. newest darlings of the left, due to what I like to call the effect, which is when something tragic happens I to- I think you can say 9-11 without demonetizing the video because it's literally just two numbers right next to each other. They can't demonetize you for that a person in a community, a marginalized community especially, and folks begin to rally behind them in order to ward off a common enemy. Well, she did cause 9-11, so if anything, the word keffels would be demonetized. Like saying Osama bin Laden. Me, which in this case was Kiwi Farms. And, and let me get serious. Well, let's take a moment. I can't believe I'm saying this, right? But we gotta commend keffels, because she went up against a system that is the taint a fortune. Like all of the sweat and the unctuous grease from the neck beards them of Reddit and our poll alike, it settles into Kiwi farms. Okay. There are forms dedicated to doxing people, threads that were literal nooses for some Sudukos. And the intrepid Keffels fought valiantly, endured some of the worst of Kiwi farms. Then emerged like a phoenix into a shiny okay. career in leftist progressive punditing and also posturing, but we'll get to that. This is a shit description, Q. Well, okay, right. Well, with this script writing style, we're not going to get a straightforward explanation of anything. Then she piss on it. I talking about like old yellow style, show the leg or piss on it, right? She gone okay. on to make some of the most egregious lies and bigotries. We whoa, whoa, okay. So on the left side, this is Keffels engaging with Jai. There's no way to like summarize this because Jai could be the subject of like a six hour drama video, but they're scum and basically like a moral black hole and any negative engagement with Jai is Jai's fault. Uh, if you disagree with Jai, you are in the right. It doesn't matter what they say. They say the sky is blue, you disagree. You were correct. It was overcast that day. The sky was white, or maybe a gray. Over on the right side, in the egregious race, racism section, I see the word noodle. Noodles are tasty. W noodles. I bought the Tasty Noodle Cookbook. That is pretty racist. What? You only need one statement to. Jai made a fake change.org petition to collect information on Eden Knight supporters so she can dox them. Oh, Eden Knight, the, the Saudi trans girl who was kidnapped from the States, uh, who died in Saudi Arabia, and then Jai attacked people who were mourning Eden and then tried to dox the... Right, yeah. Like I said, sky's blue? Nope, sky's gray. So the context for the noodle thing, I think, is that people got really mad because a white woman made a cookbook that included cooking like noodles and dumplings. And then a post went viral saying that it was racist for a, for a white woman to make a cookbook with dumplings and noodles. 
and Keffels is making fun of the people who believe that by saying that she likes noodles, which is, I guess, in this context, being framed as a racist dog whistle? We have seen in this space, to the point where it got so bad that she had to do the Just got a walk, I'm noodling so hard. Oh, here's Blue Sky Has Gone Woke, a very real indication of vile racism Oh, what's this one down here? I have gathered what I need. When I awake, it is time to make tasty noodles from the Why Did a White Woman Make a Cookbook About Dumplings and Noodles Cookbook. I will report on my findings. What does it say about this man in this video that these things are being cited? Oh, by the way, I think the, uh, the, the funniest thing here is that the premise of this video is that being a member of a minority group uh, doesn't shield you from criticism, whereas that is the literal only thing that Jai says in their own defense. The the entire like apex of Jai's existence is you can't criticize me for what I've done because I'm a minority. Presumably this is a position that um this guy also holds for himself. Like I have I mean if he's throwing up like Professor Flowers, Jesse Gender, Noah Sampson, Jai thinks that it's a racial dog whistle to say you like noodles. Um this guy like would do the same thing, of course. So it's it's basically the argument is is I alone can't defend myself by reminding people that I'm a member of some minority groups, which thankfully I don't. They do. This. She got help. Now let me. Yeah, Keffels went to rehab. Start by saying this, right? This is an arc that we need to encourage. We ought to encourage it. When folks are battling addictions and illnesses, then they get help. We ought to commend this. If, you, if we just ended it right here, that would be the best case scenario. Because like we're, we're, we're moving towards a but. That being said. Yeah, it is. Getting help in itself is not atonement. And it is also not a pacifier of the pain that the, that the perpetrator inflicted. For saying noodles. Atone for the noodle. You going to a rehab center does not atone for you making noodles from a white woman cookbook. Uh, obviously, Keffels didn't mean for it to be. I don't think Keffels checked in thinking like, ah, this will make up for the noodles. You know, uh, I think she um, I think she just went to rehab, you know, for health reasons. While you may be a victim of your own traumas and malignments, you cannot now claim victimhood status after inflicting pain at scale. But many support- Where, where is that, where is that happening? Pain at scale? Well, she did do 9-11, but like, wh where is that? Like, he's just, notice how likewise with the autism thing with me, he's just making it up. Like, where is this being said? Like what? Like atonement for the noodles? Where? Where? Where is it? Where? Porters of Keffels warded off criticism in the name of her rehab visit, and whether she. Where? 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 I like. I like how because what, what this effectively is doing is he's attacking her for the rehab visit. He's basically saying, "Oh, you bitch! You want to not die from an overdose? Well, what about all the people who had to think about noodles? That's that's literally what he's saying. That sounds like a joke. Like I'm." constructing a straw man or being comedically hyperbolic. That is actually what he's saying, though. Like, like her going to rehab was a selfish act, evidentiary to her not caring about the harm she's done for the noodles. He's doing it intentionally or not. Keffels is not only using her status as a trans woman, a trans woman that was attacked by one of the most vicious platforms on the internet, but also her status as a... Where, 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 where is this happening? We have tweets of the noodle. Surely there are tweets of her saying, I'm a trans woman, don't criticize me. Like, you got nine noodle tweets. You can't find one tweet that, that, that of, of her shielding herself in that way? You got the noodle tweets. Survivor of substance abuse. And she primped and preened the slithering coils of Medusa. So I'm... What? This, 
this stupid bitch, this whore Keffels, she went, she, what, after, she, you really think you can do that? You really think you can just walk away from those noodle tweets and go to rehab? You really, you think this is something that you can just walk away from? You made the white woman noodles. You made the white woman dumplings. You really think you can just go to a rehab center? It's, it's, it's the same. Am I even, is this even a joke? Like, I'm saying this in a funnier way, but I'm basically just repeating what he said. Like, I, I'm just saying it funnier. Like, I'm improving on the comedy element. I'm not really changing up the content. Still trying to figure it out. I'm still, like, working through with, like, a therapist and psychiatrist to, like, work through certain things. But I would say as someone who has struggled with mental health for most of her life, I... One of my biggest pet peeves is when people use that as an excuse to justify behavior. I grew up with a lot. Shame. Good thing couples didn't do that. Or, you know, me. I've never been to therapy. A lot of people around that. Um, like, like, I remember I was in this, like, theater group once. And, like, one of my friends at the time was, like, really mean to this other girl. And she was like, I just have anxiety today. Okay, that's not true. When I was in middle school, my parents did have me take a couple of sessions with a therapist because I said something homophobic towards the one gay kid in the class. In fairness, no one taught me what being gay meant. He was just the one gay kid, so I thought all gay people were annoying and framed my jokes and mockeries accordingly. There was definitely a point where, like, especially during the pandemic, my mental health was affecting the my parents, like the people I live with, because at a certain point I was in, like, a heavy depressive episode and, like... I was just like, I essentially had a meltdown and like my parents were going to take me to a hospital to like try to like sort that out. That's what really like. Did you really think person whose name I don't know that that would absolve you of the guilt of that time you ate noodles? That was like the moment for me where I was like, I need to be on medication. In a By the way, I want to make it clear. The guests that have been on this video have mostly been good and agreeable. They haven't actually said stuff I've really disagreed with that much. The reason their inclusion and their words are bad is because it's in the context of the stupid arguments being made by the foreign man in the foreign land, by the, by the main guy. It's the context of their, like, I don't know what information they were primed with, you know? Like, Jesse Gender did a thing about how it was bad that a range master who was autistic loaded to shotguns with the wrong powder. I agree, that's not good. But like, did, did was was did did the did the main guy ask her like you know what, what do you think Vosh is like? And Jesse Gender was like, oh, Vosh is just like this range master guy, this autistic loser who put the wrong shotgun powder in, or or did or was this like primed out? I have no way of knowing, so I don't really have an issue with any of the guests here. I don't hold this against any of them, even that person whose name had swole in it, the uh, person who's exactly like me because we're both uh, bi and uh, autistic said like, oh, you know, yeah, I think it's bad when Vosh's community shields him from, but like that info could have been primed. Like the foreign man, foreign land guy could have been like, um, so you've noticed this trend with Vosh's community doing this thing, right? So like, I don't know if that's actually, because like in the context of the interview, they, they're gonna go along with the premise and a lot of people just believe anything negative they hear about me. So I don't hold anything against any of the guests here general sense because treatment looks different for everyone it just prevents incidents like that from happening in the future or like if some similar feelings like that pop up you know how to handle it but that doesn't just do foreign accent for one i couldn't for two i find it's caribbean right i find caribbean accents very pleasant i don't want to f it up if i or you know wash you know wash you of any consequences because you're preventing that going forward. Like you still have to take accountability for how you acted in the moment, even if it was out of your control. Like there's like this saying that I really love that like your trauma is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. White women in particular have been known for, and rightfully so, for their loyalty to whiteness above femininity when it serves them, only to return to the label of womanhood when it's time to dawn those i'm with her pins with just pearly things as well i think she's the way i don't know if i agree with that analysis necessarily i think for the most part people tend to experience their gender and have stronger opinions on and allegiance to their gender identity than they than they have with race not always 
But often. I'm not sure. The way that she's like directly contradicting the things that she says bec- by having a YouTube channel and by having her own career and not marrying mm-hmm. herself yes, off and having sorry. children. I mean, that that fact in itself just kind of proves that it's quite an easy grift. You, you know, you don't you don't even have to live the values that you're putting out there. Like they don't they don't care. Like as as long as you're a woman who's agreeing with them, they don't care. So with our videos, you can kind of tell. Like we we put a lot of time into them. We we consider the things we're going to say, and you know, it's. I think he means upholding the racial status quo over anything else. I think it's very very complicated. I think I think there's a lot of room for discussion on that subject. It's a well sort of rounded video. Whereas if you look at just pearly things as content. It's it's terrible. She just sits in front of a camera and she just talks crap. And sometimes she won't even edit out when she's just sat there like scrolling through her phone. You should just sit there for a minute like... While women of color, mostly black women and femmes as always, tirelessly labor to uplift their community's social position. Getting back to Lena Dunham, once again, proving... Okay. I don't understand what the purpose of inclusions like that. Women of color, especially black women and femmes, I don't know. The, is the implication like, well, Latin women? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. It's weird. ...herself to be one of the worst people of 2013, tweeted that she'd be the first openly straight woman to French kiss the first openly gay NBA player. Anyway. Okay. And again... Keep in mind that this is the same white woman who harassed Odell Beckham because he refused to engage with someone so absolutely deranged. Well, let's start talking about language, its many okay. forms, its meanings, and its evolution. A Canadian paper, the Toronto Star, once found itself in some internet drama over the concept of race and the verbiage they used. The Ontario Human Rights Commission had settled on a term in use to the reference of people of color, racialized people. Because they accepted that race is a social construct, they decided to use the phrase racialized person or racialized group instead of labels that they said were outdated, like racial minority, visible minority, people of color, and non-white. And so, In the feeble-minded attempt at being the onion, a reporter at the Toronto Star headlined five other labels for people of color, or non-whites, or racialized people. I mean, surely the commission focused on human rights was being sensitive, just like the Gen Z weirdos. Always being such crybabies and snowflakes, right? Well, what, what? readers naturally complain to the news outlet about What does this have to do wrongs. with anything? People hate it that she was making fun of it. Well, less she thought that the labels themselves were funny, but the idea that creating new terms... I literally don't know what he's saying right now. But this is like, has anyone ever listened to that Italian song, or like an, <laughs> an Italian songwriter made a song to prove that Italians would listen to anything in English. He made a song that sounded like it was English, but isn't actually. That, that's like this. Like, it's made to sound like a video essay, but it's not. I feel like it takes more artistry to make something this incoherent than it would to just make the video essay. It's that we're more inclusive is an exhausting, silly process that seems reductive. After so much backlash, The story she wrote was removed from the website on the same day with a community note that the piece did not meet the company's standards. Coincidentally, at the same time, the United States Army was critiqued for not being an imperialist force that assisted in the global domination of the crumbling American empire, but for updating its code of conduct and regulations on preventing discrimination by saying that people who identified as African American or black may also identify it as a Negro. Personally. Okay. What does any of this have to do? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. The term Negro exudes the I had a dream and well, golly gee, better go grab me a soda pop after going to such a great party era. But 
you know, I digress. The story was widely reported. People were shocked. The U.S. Army? Negroes? The policy hoped to provide fair treatment. No, for- really, like in a video that's about, the video is titled, When You're Racist But Rainbow. What does this mean? Is the U.S. Army rainbow? Military personnel and family members without any regard to race, gender identity, religious beliefs, or nationality. By proposing, then that term will take on the default and classifies people of color as, once again, the other, or deviation, and can therefore be excused when they say something incredibly racist or transphobic. We also forget that that the people behind those platforms are human beings who will f*** up and make mistakes. Um, sometimes, sometimes very egregiously, they need to be super held accountable for. But also, sometimes in in smaller ways. Not to, I don't want to say benign ways, but smaller ways. And what we will do to marginalize people is we will hold them even more accountable and extrapolate the harm, even like hyperbolicize the harm. Uh, in order to be more quick to tear them down in ways that cis dude creators will will n- cis white dude creators will not uh, have to uh, deal with as much. You know, they'll say something awful and they'll be given a little bit more forgiveness than a. I like the um, I like the implication that my privileged identity status means that people will give me a pass for what I say when I am the most widely hated person on the online left by far. Like, what? Like, oh, yeah, man. People will make excuses for anything that Vosh... Really? Is that the common experience that people have when I get brought up online? It's it's just widespread, uncritical adulation? It's very weird. Yeah, I don't even get a pass from my own community. A marginalized creator who will often will have more hyperbolicized harm. And so... It's one of those, it's one of those things like, I don't think anyone's owed a platform. I think everyone on a platform should be held accountable for if they fuck up. And it's not just like you you should be allowed to continue to have it. But we also at the same time need to recognize that the standards that we hold for marginalized creators is much higher. And we are much more willing to tear down their platforms than we are for non-marginalized creators. It's the fact that we don't, we don't, we don't. I actually disagree with that in the online left specifically. I think that the online left is way more willing to be critical of men, of cis people, of straight people, blah, blah, um, for all the obvious reasons. This argument's been gone over a thousand times. And, uh, you know, it, in fact, by the way, uh, this was discussed in this video. Earlier in this video, uh, it was said explicitly um, that there is sometimes a hesitance to criticize people like Candace Owens or Blair White because their minority status operates as a shield. Like, who do you think hesitates to criticize minorities? The right? No, it's the left. Bosh, sort of. I think it's why Contra and Keppels have gotten a lot of hate from within the left. They're held to ridiculous standards. Uh, not really. Contra never got as much harassment or hate as I do. Uh, Contra is just more sensitive than me, which is her right. And let's be fair, most people can't be me. You know, they all want to be. Not everyone can be. Keffels has gotten an enormous amount of hate, but a lot of it was from the right. And the hatred that she got from the left, a lot of it kind of had to do with, like, her perceived adjacency to me. Obviously, I am friends with Keffels, so that part is true. But Keffels wasn't, like, being held accountable due to the high standards placed on her by being trans. Keffels was being held accountable because she built up a community of tender queers by being a broad advocate for trans rights, and then that same community tore her apart when it turns out that Keffels is not so psychotically anxious that she can't order a pizza on the phone. But I don't necessarily think that's because she's trans. Like, I think that her being trans made her a greater target for the Kiwi Farms types, and the more psychotic left-leaning people use that to attack her over, but that's more like a moon-reflecting-the-sunlight kind of thing than it is the argument itself. Now, I think broadly on the left, minorities get more leeway, um, but that's just in the online left, you know, which is a small minority of online engagement in most of the internet and in most of the world, being members of, uh, being a member to like privileged groups will obviously be to your benefit and people who are not members of those groups will be treated more harshly. 
We don't have the space to fuck up. We don't have the space to be shitty, selfish people who tell lies. We're not allowed. Yeah, no, nah, you, you do. You can if you want to. It's a free country. We're just, we can't. And that's frustrating. And I feel like we won't have, True, like, yeah. equality isn't going to be a thing until marginalized people are allowed to also be shitty. Go back to labels for a minute. The reason labels continue to fluctuate do. is because of the ever-evolving positions of those being referred to. In many cases, those in the affected groups prefer to label themselves, which is a process called creating an autonym. As they become more socially visible, naturally, terms can also be debated within a group. Like if an American black person should use black or African American. The groups we choose to identify with and their associated identifiers also provide credibility and open the gates of access to that community. If what? you're black, you can reclaim the N-word. And if you're queer, you can reclaim the F-slur. And if you're black and queer, well, you understand what I'm saying, right? Depending upon the context, reclaim slurs are terms of endearment or used to poke fun at themselves. Okay. While in other cases not used by those within that group, they're absolutely derogatory. What makes someone marginalized to fit into the identified group is what sociology calls being in the out group. Those not in the in group, which is whiteness, in the case of Western racial identity, which white people made, are other and pushed to the fringes of society where they're treated as lesser than or as a means of economic and social fodder. Okay. And of course, being marginalized doesn't exempt anyone from having biases. Whether internalized against their own group or externalized through tangible ameliorate, actions upon ameliorate, others. Ameliorate, ameliorate, ameliorate. You know, and I get it. We all have flaws. It's totally natural to get defensive. But the use of a shield damage our ability to progress as empathetic human beings in collaborations. Wait, what, 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 why did he say all of that? What did that have to do? do you, okay. Basic argument structure, okay? Premise, premise, evidence, evidence, argument, conclusion. What, what, what is this? What, what is this Gordian's knot of 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 threads of logic? Community organizations, activism, and on our own personal journeys, shields create rifts where there should be solidarity. We need to encourage dialogue, self-reflection, and less virtue signaling anger for the tiniest really? details. Semantics are famous tactics used by those on the far right and center to antagonize the left. What? Making virtual identities that seem legit. Semantics isn't a tactic. What? Legitimate to derail progressive discourse because they know that people are huge on identity politics and labels. And it's something that people have been calling other leftists out for doing online as well. So, while we hold ourselves and each other accountable, we should understand how marginalized identities have historically interacted and how people are unique and multifaceted, okay. which sometimes means taking a step back. Not every marginalized person in their community is fit to represent their entire group or speak on its behalf because people aren't monoliths and people shouldn't use their labels as a means of deflection. Okay. After all, I agree. A platform is not a right, it's a privilege. And it comes with a responsibility that not everybody can handle. And you know what else people can't handle? The truth, which as a political scientist is of the utmost important to me. So I'm gonna let you in on a little secret I learned in my master's program. Finding factual- This guy has a master's in political science? Oh God, that's why he talks like that. He's trying to justify his degree. I guess the uh, monetization concerns make sense now. He's probably got a lot to pay back. Yeah, this is a sponsored bit, I can tell. Journalism is difficult due to the sensationalization of the sources. Political scientists would swear by the New York Times or BBC. What is it? What, what, what is it? And use ground news? Of every day. And with my link, ground.news. Yeah, ground news. Yep, ground news, yeah. You know, I didn't expect this video to be pro me. Never have I seen my arguments laid out so ineloquently. I want that hour back. No, I have taken that hour of your life and I will do with it whatever I want. How does it feel to get clickbaited that hard? I didn't get clickbaited.
it said in the video which section had to do with me. I didn't think the whole video was about me. I did expect the video to be about anything. I did expect the video to have some kind of central thesis. Um, but that's just my cishet white privilege something something or whatever. Yeah, that was a wild one. That was wild. That was a that was a remarkably incoherent. Anyway, there's not even anything to really respond to because again, the central premise of the video was is the thing I keep getting in trouble for saying. Uh, but okay, ooh, debate is it really happening? With foreign man to foreign land? When did I say that was happening? The other guy, Jesse Singal. Oh yeah, that'll happen. Not today. Let my God, guys. Let my cough fully clear up before I have a debate. Jesus Christ. Don't forget these people lie to others about you and Kevils. My Man, this foreign land guy was defending Jai and put forward Kevils saying noodle as evidence of her racism. I am fully aware of the crowd that he circles with and the stuff that he says, and it does not matter to me. To be perfectly honest, if you're the kind of person who could be convinced by a video like that, you were probably never smart enough to appreciate my content anyway. That sounds incredibly arrogant. I kind of mean it, though, man. Those editing flourishes and that style of video writing, like, unironically, like, yeah, I don't know. Handicap shit. Yeah, it's key, literal, like, key jingling. Like, Jesus. Maxor editing, but not funny. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be funny. I really wish Cornbread Tube would just admit they're a drama community. What is Cornbread Tube? Is that, like, because they're corny, or is that a racial dog whistle because cornbread is like a southern barbecue thing and he was black. Are you being racist, Gayfesh? Gayfesh is racist now. It's a race thing. Confirmed. Confirmed. It's what FD Signifier calls them. So not racist, but they're corny. So the joke is that they're corny? Oh, okay, whatever. Who even says I'm in bread tube? The only time I <laughs> learn I'm in bread tube is when other people tell me that I am. Yeah, bread tube doesn't even exist anymore. Contra doesn't make videos. H-Bomb makes videos about, like, video game analysis. I guess Philosophy Tube's still doing work. 